Ah, the Switchers, Kanan here, bringing you my review for Amazing Superhero Squad. So subscribe for more weekly reviews, just like this one, and sales videos. Support the channel maybe by clicking that thanks button below. And please do like the video, as it really does help the channel grow. I'm not Batman. Engage. So for anyone that knows me, I am a massive superhero fan and grew up with them, all the comics and the like, and it definitely is one of my big interests. Although I have to admit, more Marvel than DC. But when I heard about this game, I really, really had to play it. Putting you in charge of a superhero corporation, it sounded like something from The Boys on Amazon Prime, and yes, I love that show. And obviously I'm talking about more the corporation running rather than the other side of it. And so, dealing with the day-to-day -day runnings of a corporation like this has you involved in many different aspects, but most importantly, a budget, for profit obviously, Followers, PR is very important for a company like this, still obviously. Share prices integral to growing a business and relations with the government, wink wink, you scratch my back, blah blah blah. And all these things are very integral because if any of them dip to zero, it is a game over. As you progress through the game, you will want to be hiring heroes, and each hero has an element, and these are reflected in the assignments given as you go. The assignments are generated with different urgencies, some you don't need to, well, even bother with, and some it's vital to do, and some can even affect your heroes in some way or the other. Once you work out which is which, it's then up to you to decide what to do and who to send. You can even hire more heroes if you don't have any that match the actual assignments at hand and kind of like get rid of all the other ones that you don't need just to make room for, well, useful heroes, for want of a better word. Let's explain this a little bit more in detail, shall we? Right then, so basically, yeah, come here, speeding up time. Oh, we've got one. There we go. We've got one. Ah, okay, this is a bit different. Um... Yeah, so on certain missions, you can, like, send detectives and things like that. Uh, yes, crying out loud, it says, Job woman, jeez. Speed up time so that, yep, there we go. So this one needs one of the sniper or uh, destructible people, or whatever. And then click on there, and then you're back over here, speeding up time once again. I mean, you can go over here and read, like, your weekly reports and things like that. You'll probably die a lot at the uh, beginning of the game. Uh, okay, so this one, this one. Oh, damn, I need another one. So I haven't got one, so I'm going to have to... Nope, I can't hire any. Oh, that's just... Anyway, but that's basically how it works. Yay, that you're excited. And as I kind of hinted a little bit in that video, this all comes with a gameplay loop that, well, in the end, will have you not even reading the tasks at hand and just filling in the blanks as in just matching the elements or whatever you need to match to the actual task at hand. And all this kind of plays out like this. Get assignment, pick hero according to the actual element needed, get rid of any that you don't need to bring in some that you do need, click on them, put them in place, go heroes, which is the button that you press, Speed up time for a bit until another actual assignment appears and you'll either run out of actual heroes to use or you'll basically just end the actual week if that makes sense. And basically rinse and repeat until you've lasted as long as you can. And as I said, make sure you pick wisely as some of the actual events have different emergency levels. This is key to lasting longer. All of this is actually made slightly harder due to the writing being very small in parts and I mainly play my actual uh, Switch in handheld mode. Anywho, after each turn you get a report of how well it's all gone and how your decisions have actually affected the company's stats, earnings, likes, dislikes and share prices, etc. There are also a few other noticeable features like a map of the city where you can find info and the like, articles and reports for the week, a guide with a gallery info and citizens and heroes or on them, and a trophy wall. 
so the extra bits are basically a map so that you can pick a place and then yeah you can get information about them some of them more some less um a lot of reading and then hey here's all the controls all about the elements blah blah blah, 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 blah and all that lot relevancy of things and all and then you get this which is give me a glossary boom boom shake the room and then like you get little pictures and all that you can look at that you've unlocked so yeah that's something isn't it mm. and then you got your trophies here Ooh, look how many i've unlocked and then let's see that's it really it's uh yeah it's got some extra bits but does it save it hmm Although all said and done, all of that is fine and dandy, but what is actually lacking in this game is a touchscreen feature. I mean, why the heck is it actually missing on the Switch version? I mean, this is, for me, a massive misjudgment on the actual devs part. And as the controls have you scrolling around the screen, it really makes playing the game a chore at times. It's not even an arrow, so you can just freely scroll around the screen and go to the areas you want to go to more quickly. It kind of feels like, I don't know, a lazy port of a PC game. Visually, Hero Squad looks okay, but it's nothing really special. This is due to all of it more or less being still images, and it doesn't really hold up to that nice little intro, short as it was, that you get at the start of the game. Sound wise, well, it's kind of the same. A little, meh, it's okay, really, it's okay. Look, I like a good strategy management type game, but this one just felt a little, I don't know, sparse of anything interesting and things to do in the actual game. And really, to top it all off, I had a major bug at the actual start of the game, and it just kept on not giving me any missions or anything, wouldn't let me look at the map, but of course, because I hadn't played it before, I didn't know that this was, you know, I thought the map was maybe something you unlocked and everything. But no, I wasted all that time just playing and trying to do it, as I thought this was normal for the game, because it gave me some missions at the beginning, and then that was it, gone. And yeah, I was staring at a blank screen, speeding up time for quite a while, until I luckily reset the game, and it, again, luckily, worked again. The good. A great idea. I mean, it really is. I, I was excited about this. Fun for a short time-ish. I'm guessing as long as you don't have that bug at the beginning. And I did like the intro a little. The bad. Small writing. No touchscreen. Gets samey and repetitive quickly. After a while, you won't even be interested in reading half the stuff put out. Seems a little confusing at first. Oh, and there's that bug. I'm thinking maybe this one's not for me, or maybe I've missed something, but in the end, it just feels a little lazy, repetitive, not really that much fun to play. And because of all of that, unfortunately, I'm forced to give Hero Squad a 2 out of 5, and I would find it really hard to recommend this to anyone as an experience or even a game who even likes superheroes or management. And that's depressed me a little. Well, there's always next time. Haha, <laughs> hopefully. And why not join me for it by subscribing to the channel for weekly reviews and sales videos. If you'd like to help support the channel, clicking that thanks button down below really helps. And liking this video really helps the channel grow as well. And now let's take a look at the alternative for today. Hmm. I think Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2. Yes, not a management game, but at this point, anything to do with superheroes-ish would really make me happy. I did actually own this on the PS4. I think I owned it on the Switch, but physical. I got rid of all my physical games a long time ago. But it was enjoyable. I did have fun with it, and it's multiplayer as well. But as usual, if you have a better alternative, please do leave it down below in the comments section, along with any thoughts about Super, well, Amazing Superhero Squad would be much appreciated. I try to answer them all. And if you'd like to take the conversation a little bit further, then feel free to come and join the Switchheads community Discord. Because life is better when we switch together.